This is our third video on isolating spore syringes, and we're about to make some culture slants, baby. If you haven't seen our first two videos, go check them out, cause this train ain't a stopping. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is measure out your ingredients. We're using the pre-mixed agar meter that we offer in our shop. So if you don't wanna fuss with making your own, pick some up at freshcultivators.com. But maybe you don't wanna buy from us. Maybe you're like the alchemical mage that lives for side quests, and you get off on scouring the net for hours in search of these sacred ingredients so that you may concoct your own agar media if so i offer you my blessing and a starting point for your journey godspeed now it's time to add our media to our water and stir 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 do make sure that your water is boiling now that we have our media together we're about to portion out the liquid into our slants but first we're going to show you an optional step here we're adding hydrated sticks to our slants the reasoning behind this step is that the mycelium can colonize the wood which allows it to survive in storage for longer periods of time now, whether or not this is true, I don't know, but I like to add them anyhow. I transfer my cultures to fresh slants at least once a year, and so far I haven't had any issues. Now cap off your slants and agar and place everything in your autoclave or pressure cooker for sterilization. Now it's time to measure out our media. This step must be done in front of a flow hood or in a stiller box, but if you don't have either, you can pre-fill your slants and then sterilize them. Just keep in mind that the pressure during the sterilization cycle may cause your meter to boil out of your slants. These particular slants are 15 milliliters. I like to add 10 milliliters of solution to each slant. That way I have a nice slope to work with after these cool. If you're using a different slant size, simply fill your tube with water and begin to pour it out until you reach the slope of your preference. Then simply fill each one of your slants with that amount of solution. Now it's time to cap off our slants and place them at a slope for cooling. Here I'm using a stack of pennies. Add or subtract pennies to get the slope of your preference. You're gonna wanna be a bit careful resting your slants. You want just enough of an incline so that the solution inside the slants reaches the tube's opening, but it doesn't wash up against the cap. Otherwise, you'll have difficulty placing in your transfer later on. Also, if you're using sticks, ensure they're resting at the bottom of the tube. Now allow everything to cool for at least 20 minutes. Now it's time to have a look at our slants and see how they turned out. So it seems that we have a great slope for our mycelium to colonize along. Our stick is embedded in the agar, so we'll need to slice down into it while placing our transfer so that way our mycelium will reach it. Also, I turned my slant while it was sloped because the stick wasn't at the bottom, which left some agar on the lip of the mouth. We can always set our slope deeper within our slant if we don't want it so close to the opening. It's all preference, so feel free to experiment. Either way, these agar slants are going to work flawlessly. Now it's time to have a look at our fourth round of isolation and see how we're doing. As usual, we're going to start off with our first plate and set A. I would say this culture is solid. It's about colonizing the entire plate in only a week. I'm happy with this one. Let's move on to our second plate and see how we've done. And it looks like we don't have a pure isolate yet. The best thing to do would be to continue isolating this plate until it's pure. But for now, I'm gonna put it into storage and get back to it at a later time. Now it's time to have a look at our third plate and see how we're doing. And from what I can see, we have a single isolate. This is ready to go into one of our slants. Now it's time to have a look at our syringe set C. This plate is looking pretty good to me. We can isolate it maybe another round or two, but for now, we'll go ahead and put it in a slant. Now, let's go ahead and look at our second plate. And this is looking consistent to me. I'm happy with the results. And now it's time for our final plate. And to me, it looks like this could use another round of isolation. So I'll go ahead and store it and get back to it at a later date. So let's get to isolating. I like to keep my slant in my left hand and loosen the cap with my index finger and my thumb. At the same time, I'll put the plate also in my left hand while I make my cut. This makes it easy for me to quickly put down the plate after I've made my cut and then use my thumb and index finger to remove the cap while I place my agar wedge into the slant. And since the cap is still in my index finger and thumb, I can place it right back over and then use my other hand to tighten it. Or like for this slant, I'll hold the agar plate and get my transfer, then use my left hand to unscrew the cap, place in my agar wedge, and then place back on the cap. Here I poured my agar plate a little bit thick, so I was having trouble getting the wedge into the slant. With this plate on the other hand, I pour the agar pretty thin, so when I take my transfer, I'm able to put it into my slant relatively easily. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're pouring agar plates that will be used to make transfers to agar slants later down the line. 
They do sell slants of all different sizes and shapes, so you can get a bigger, wider one if you're working with thicker agar. So just find out what works for you and ultimately have fun along the way. Now that we finished putting all of our coasters into slants, the last thing I like to do is take a piece of parafilm and then wrap up our tubes so that way they can stay airtight during storage. If you don't have parafilm, you can use plastic wrap. It works just as well. If you are using parafilm, just simply cut a square and cut that square into half. And then you'll take the piece of parafilm and just stretch it over the cap. Be sure that you're wrapping underneath the cap as well as over the cap. That way you have an airtight seal. Now, just repeat this with all your other slants and place them in your fridge until you're ready to use them. Properly stored slants will last about a year, which is around the time it's good to renew them. And that's it. If you have any questions, reach out to us at hello at freshcultivators.com and take a look at our store, freshcultivators.com. Woo!